Playing Boros in Commander can often feel like an uphill struggle. There's a reason that a lot of people think it's one of the worst color pairs. It can have real issues with card draw, ramp, and card advantage. In recent years, there have been some exciting new cards that attempt to fix this problem. Cards like Smothering Tithe, Savine's Reclamation, and the new Verge Rangers from Commander 2020, which we're all excited to add to our decks. Today, though, I'd like to delve further back to bring you a Boros artifact that can turn the tide of battle. How many times have you lost a game because you didn't have access to a removal spell? What about the amount of times you just needed one more turn to take the win? Or maybe your opponent's luck with always having board wipes is leaving you in despair. Well, then have I got a card for you. Let's take a look at the best Boros card you should play, Sunforger. Sunforger is a three mana artifact equipment. It has an equip cost of three and it grants a pretty respectable plus four plus zero buff to your creature. If that's all it did, it'd be overcosted for sure. In addition to the power buff though, it has a fairly unique ability. By paying a red and a white at instant speed and unattaching Sunforger, you can search your library for a red or white instant with CMC four or less and play it without paying its mana cost. Yep, that's a straight up repeatable tutor in Boros. It's a very powerful effect, and if you're set up to use it with the right enablers and the right suite of spells, you'll feel like the hammer-throwing son of Odin himself. Before we get into it, let's first look at the exact kinds of spells we can and can't tutor up. First up, it mentions that it has to be a red or white card. Any spell that is hybrid or has white or red as one of its colors can be classed as a red or white spell. That means you'll be able to cast Swords to Plowshares, Lightning Helix, Beckon Apparition, or Crackling Doom, as they all meet the requirement of being red or white instance and costing four or less. When casting a spell with X in its mana cost, the value of X would be zero when casting it with Sunforger from your library. So unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to play something like Comet's storm or commune with lava because x would always be zero any alternative costs can't be paid so no overload when using sunforger if we wanted to cast a split card the total converted mana cost is the cost of both halves added together by that merit we can wear and tear as the total converted mana cost is three but we can still only cast one half of it as the fuse mode is only available when casting the spell from your hand any cards with additional costs that are available when casting the spell can be paid. So if you want to pay the kicker on Dismantling Blow or Orem's Chant, you can. The base spell is free, but the kicker cost can be paid. Similarly, you could opt to pay the buyback on a Reiterate. If an opponent has an annoying Teferi Time Raveler in play, in other words, a Teferi Time Raveler, Sunforger would unfortunately not get around it. You can still only cast your spells at sorcery speed. Better have that Red Elemental Blast ready in advance. Finally, remember that when you activate Sunforger's ability, the cost is paying red and white and unattaching it. That ability uses the stack, so even if you wanted to grab a split-second spell like Angel's Grace or Sudden Shock, your opponents will have a chance to respond first before you can tutor the spell. Now that we have that out of the way, we can start to look at how best to utilize our weapon of choice. The Toolbox Approach the beauty of having access to any instant in our deck that meets the requirements means we can build what's known as a toolbox. Toolboxes in deck building refer to a selection of cards, usually one ofs, that take up space either within the deck or in the sideboard. These toolboxes act as a diverse set of proactive and reactive ways to deal with different strategies and situations. A great example of a toolbox strategy you might be familiar with is using Karn, the Great Curator, in Modern. Karn's downtick allows you to take an artifact you own from outside the game or in exile and put it into your hand. Modern decks make use of this by keeping situational cards in their sideboards, such as Liquid Metal Coating, Mycosynth Lattice, or Graft Digger's Cage. They'll always be ready to face strategies head-on in Game 1 without waiting for Game 2 to sideboard, and so it's a popular way to utilize Karn. We don't have sideboards in Commander, but what we can do is take a similar approach to preparing ourselves for every eventuality. So let's take a look at what you can prepare to ensure your victory. Removal is probably the most tangibly impactful include, so let's start there. Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile are probably in your deck already, but having access to them with Sunforger is an exciting prospect. 
If you're heavy on artifacts or an equipment-based deck, then consider Dispatch too. It'll rarely not benefit from metal craft and is just as efficient. If your meta is really big on graveyard strategies, there's also Crib Swap, which can exile a creature, leaving them with a 1-1 changeling. Creatures aren't the only things you'll want to remove, so Return to Dust is a good start here. You can still activate Sunforger in your main phase in order to hit the requirements on this. But if you do cast it at instant speed, it's not the worst to only hit one permanent. Most white decks these days will be running Heliod's Intervention due to its flexibility, but remember, it's an X spell, so you'll need some other way to remove artifacts and enchantments that can be cast with Sunforger. Alongside Return to Dust, look at Crush Contraband for more exile-based removal, or Wear and Tear. Chaos Warp and Generous Gift are great cards to include in a Sunforger Suite too. They're multifunctional, with the ability to hit any permanent, so should feature pretty highly on your short list. Enlightened Tutor can be cast to prepare for your upcoming turn. Putting an important enchantment like True Conviction on top of your library, or even searching out a game-ending equipment like Black Blade Reforged or Ember Cleave. Tithe is a useful card to have available to make use of extra mana. If there's nothing better to do, you can always equalize by grabbing some lands from your deck to help feed the hungry costs of keeping up with Sunforger. Evasive Maneuvers What's most powerful about Sunforger is the ability to be reactive and anticipate your opponent's every move. Whatever they try to do, you'll have an answer, and believe me, nothing feels better than saying no when you're not playing blue. Even better when you get to say it to a blue player. Quite literally, we have access to counter spells. Red Elemental Blast, Pyroblast, Lapse of Certainty, and Rebuff the Wicked can stop spells in their tracks. They're conditional, but still reasonable answers to run one or two of. Mana Tithe might be as unexpected as the Spanish Inquisition, but it's pretty unplayable in Commander, so steer clear from that one. We can't counter spells like Blue can, but protecting your permanence is a good place to start. We don't always want to use our Boros Charm to save just one permanent. So having a backup like Faith's Shield to protect your Smothering Tithe from a Reclamation Sage is useful. We can go spicier than that, though. Wild Ricochet, Reverberate, Reiterate, and the new Deflecting Swat can dash our opponent's hopes and leave them wishing they'd never cast their removal in the first place when we send the spell right back at them. Of course, sometimes we'll face board wipes that don't target our permanents. At times like that, you'll be thankful for having access to cards like Eerie Interlude to blink out your creatures until end of turn, or the new Flawless Maneuver to make them indestructible. Boros Charm is the iconic Boros Fail Safe, and it grants all of our permanents indestructible. Combining this with our own board wipe is a viable strategy, and one that can quickly turn games to our advantage. Just remember, if you do opt to hold priority and cast a protection spell in response to your own board wipe, you could be blown out massively by a counter spell. It's always better to cast the Boros Charm first before your board wipe. If an opponent uses a counter spell this way, you'll be in pretty good shape and only be down a spell. I'd be remiss not to mention Teferi's protection here. Though it's at the pricier end of what we can include in a Sunforger suite, it's arguably one of the strongest cards. If you can see an inevitable setback on the horizon, firing off this spell will give you immunity to just about anything, barring being milled out. It's a great time to go and get another drink while the other players scramble to figure out a solution. The Art of War Sunforger can offer us the use of some great tactics to upset our opponent's combat steps too. If there's a huge creature coming at us like Xenagos, God of Revels, Dawn Charm can help prevent the damage, whilst also having the modal use of regenerating our own creatures, while Deflecting Palm can deal that damage straight to our opponent instead. Comeuppance is a similar card that can prevent any damage done to you or your Planeswalker in a turn and as a bonus, directs that damage back at the creatures dealing it, or in the case of a burn spell, the opponent casting it. Yes, this'll deflect an Aetherflux Reservoir too. Spicy. Settle the Wreckage can exile a whole board of attackers and leave your opponent with more lands but an empty board. This can really punish players with greedy mana bases who might not be able to grab the full quantity of lands they're able to. Master Warcraft can allow you to dictate the course of combat, either slamming an opponent's board of utility creatures into creatures another opponent controls in order to wipe them out, or simply as a way to make your creatures unblockable. If we want to get a little trickier, Surprise Deployment can drop in a surprise blocker with a useful Enter the Battlefield effect. We can also take advantage of cards like Silence, Mandate of Peace, Abeyance, or Orem's Chant, which will stop our opponents from casting spells. 
Having access to one of these cards can help prevent a combo player from going off, and also stop an opponent from dismantling your board. There are a multitude of options for a Sunforger suite, and whilst there are must-run options, you can customize your own choices for the meta you play in, and what you have available. One of the cards I mentioned in my recent video of 10 underplayed cards in Commander was Debt of Honor. Being able to play this in response to someone destroying a particular tasty creature an opponent controls is the closest Boros can get to control magic, and it's sure to make for some memorable plays. Final Fortune. Sometimes you'll just need one more turn to win the game. The other players are tapped out and you could finish things with one more combat step. Both Final Fortune and Chance for Glory can be cast from Sunforger, giving you a window of one extra turn to end things. On the condition that if you don't, you lose for sure, but what a way to go. Or, wait for it, at least you would lose unless you had a way to stop that from happening. Pay attention now, this is a little convoluted, but Sunforger can be used to take multiple extra turns without losing the game. With the emblem from Gideon of the Trials or a Platinum Angel in play, you can avoid the losing the game trigger entirely. There's even a Sunforgerable spell for this exact scenario in Angel's Grace. We can avoid the game loss with these cards, but taking extra turns requires Mistvale vale Planes. As long as you meet the condition, you can use this land to put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. This lets us tutor out an extra turn spell continuously provided we have one of the aforementioned ways to avoid the game loss trigger. Angel's Grace or Final Fortune can always be put under an Isochron Scepter to help enable this strategy, leaving Mistvale Planes free to keep recycling the other half. Mistvale Planes is just one enabler though, and particularly with the use of Sunforger, you'll need a lot of mana to pull it off. So let's look at some other useful cards to run alongside Sunforger. Enabling Sunforger. Generally, you'll want to run at least 10 spells in your Sunforger suite, and you should make sure that you're happy to cast those spells if you're drawn to them naturally. There's no use filling your deck with niche answers if they'll just clog up your hand. Be flexible and try to keep most of your toolbox as universally relevant as possible. That's not the only way you'll need to examine your deck building to support using this equipment, though. The two main considerations are finding Sunforger and making it cost less mana to use. Useful tutors include Enlightened Tutor, Steel Shaper's Gift, Open the Armory, Goblin Engineer, Stoneforge Mystic, and Stonehewer Giant. The latter, creature-based tutors, can help get Sunforger into play underneath counter spells, which is often crucial. You should never really play your Sunforger unless you have enough mana to both equip it and use it, as opponents will be sure to want to remove it at the first opportunity. Most of the time, that means having access to 8 mana. There are always ways to make this cheaper. The new Zerda, the Dawn Waker, can reduce the equip cost to just one mana, while Fervent Champion, Kazul's Toll Collector, and Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, can make that equip cost completely free. Sigarda's Aid can let you cast it at flash speed and equip it for free immediately, and cards like Indomitable Archangel can give it Shroud to keep it protected from removal spells. The most common strategy for dealing with Sunforger is for an opponent to have two spells ready to go. One to trigger you to activate Sunforger, and another in response to make sure you can't avoid their removal. One way to combat this is to find a way to instant speed equip Sunforger so you can then add another tutored spell to the stack. You can perform this with Leon and Shikari's ability to equip at instant speed, or by tapping Brass Squire. Beyond Boros. Sunforger can also be used for spells that fall outside of purely red or white, as we touched on in the beginning. A commander like Elsha of the Infinite or Sir Gwen, Hero of Ashvale, are set up to take advantage of playing a lot of instants or equipments already, and giving Sunforger access to Jeskai and Mardu spell suites can up the power considerably. Our counter spells can be upgraded to actual counter spells, like Dovin's Veto or Counter Flux while our removal can be even more flexible by playing cards like Anguished Unmaking, Utter End, or D-Spark. We could even pull out Fire Covenant and pay the additional cost of X life to have an instant speed board wipe hitting only our opponent's creatures, or use modal cards like Kaya's Guile or Rakdos Charm to their full potential. Always having access to Eladomri's Call is also pretty sweet. The possibilities really are endless when you start to add other colors. There's no way I've covered everything you can do with Sunforger today, but I hope very much this video has given you a strong foundation to build from when you add it to your own decks. 
Putting together a Sunforger toolbox is a fun experience and one that can be swapped around between games to create some really fun gameplay. I guarantee you'll have stories to tell after playing Sunforger, so try it out. You never know when it'll help you out of a jam. Thank you.